This call is being recorded. All right, all right. Hey, this is Coach 100K, helping you make six figures in this industry. And I'm so excited to have you here and welcome you to the Uplift Breakthrough Leadership Call, guys. This is where, you know, the earning begins with the learning. We're so excited you're here every morning for leadership. You know, uh, you, you have to, you'll never be able to out earn your learning, right? So you want to always earn. Dr. Breakthrough tells us that the greatest room in the world uh, is the room for improvement. And so we can all get better. And let's go ahead and bring on our international global trainer guy. This individual here is no joke. He's the real deal. Uh, I call him the real deal. He'll tell you he's not the real deal, but he's the real deal. <laughs> and so, because uh, I'm telling you, that, guys, he's a he's a do-it-first leader. But uh, I love his, his book that he wrote because he's done it, having others do it as well, break through. It's called How to Build a Big Team Fast. And he travels the country helping people do just that and breaking through insurmountable uh, uh, things that are challenging them. And he's the number one income earner. I'm telling you, it's a short period of time, and it's round five. And we're going to have to break through. It's breakthrough time. Sorry, sorry. Well, Shark, Shark, and thank you again, Coach 100K, Pastor Kenny Smith. Uh, what a joy to be able to labor together with you and uh, many of the other leaders on this line who have a desire uh, and hunger to serve the Lord and to be a service to people and minister to people. And you, Pastor, for you and your, your wife, again, laboring, making the commitment of empowering 100,000 families to enjoy and live the six-figure and, in some cases, seven-figure lifestyle. And uh, I tell you, uh, what we're going to talk about today fits right in with what you're all about, and that is how to make the rest of your year the best of your year, uh, part two. So we're going to finish up here where we started. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, And so I want to, again, start off like I started yesterday with a trick question. This time, I hope y'all get it today, right? I said it's a trick question, <laughs> and that is, do dogs like bones? And uh, up until I, I realized it and thought about it, I would have said, yes, dogs love bones. No, dogs don't like bones. Dogs like meat, but they settle for bones. And it's time for folks to stop settling and realize, my friend, that you, you can, the finer things were designed for you, and uh, I'm telling you, all things that pertain to life and godliness are all yours, my friend. And so let's, let's decide, let's commit to making the rest of our year the best of our year. In Judges 1630, Samson, uh, and unfortunately, you know, he, 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 in the end of his life, you know, sorry, sad that it took his life. However, at the end of his life, Judges 1630, he killed more in his death than in his living. So my friend, we want to be like uh, also I talked about Jim Ryan that had this finishing kick and you want to have some fun look him up on the Google Jim Ryan back in the 60s uh, with his finishing kick and so uh, I want for, for the team folks who are part of the Breakthrough Bible Dream team folks who are part of Shark Nation if anybody ought to show the rest of the company if anybody ought to show the rest of the world how to make the rest of their year the best of their year it's us and by the way as I always say, there's a prayer that's changed my life more than anything else outside of salvation when I got saved, receiving Christ, and that is when I learned to pray, a prayer designed from the life of Solomon, but I obviously put the breakthrough spin on it, and that is, thank you, Father, that today and every way and every day hereafter, you're increasingly giving me more wisdom and knowledge and connections, grace, favor, and the wherewithal to empower those under my jurisdiction and beyond to experience breakthroughs that would please you, profit them, and cause my family and I to prosper. And I believe the result of that prayer is, is God giving me, uh, illuminating my mind to give me concepts that I can give to you that would empower you so you can be more, thus you can do more, thus you can have more. See, I was talking one time with Apostle Burrell, and, uh, and, and that is this. I think most people do everything. I'm talking about decent people, right? But most people are doing everything they know to do, especially leaders, decent leaders, right? But, but, but how do you get more done? Well, you have to increase your being. And that was the difference. See, my being back then is kind of like when you're, when you're first in your teenager, you think you're in love. When, and it may be love, but it's like a little shot glass, right? And, and then after, after, after the years and decades, now all of a sudden your capacity to love grows 
and now you've got a gallon jug. So now the love you had before seemed like it wasn't even love. You see what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, my friend, the capacity, and that's why I love the dedication, the commitment on this call to personal growth and development, my friend. Why? Because I can only do, I can't do more than beyond my being, and so I can't have more than what I do. And so what I have to do is back up and increase my being, because we are called human beings, not human doings. But as I increase my being, now I can increase my capacity to do. Uh, David said, thou hast enlarged my heart. So, so when my heart is enlarged and my capacity is enlarged, now my doing, I can exceed more and do more. And then when I do more, I can have more. And that's where you hear people talking about successful people willing to do what others won't so they can one day have what others don't. But wait a minute, my friend, but you can't do what others don't unless you first increase your being, so you have to be what others yet not, or what, uh, be what others aren't, excuse me. So, so, so that's what we're talking about here, to make the rest of your year the best of your year. Number one, I said, realize it happened for others if it, it can happen for you. So if it happened for somebody, it can happen for anybody, but God didn't make you an anybody. No, God made you a somebody. And I'm telling you, if somebody's going to make the rest of the year the best of the year, it might as well be you. Somebody's going to finish strong in their business. Might as well be you. Somebody, my friend, is going to have business booming and checks zooming. Might as well be you, my friend. I'm saying let everybody else settle. The people that, that, that don't understand, let them settle for the bones. But, no, you understand. No, you want the meat, and you're not settling. You're going to keep on keeping on, and you're going to make the rest of your year the best of your year because if it happened for others, it can happen for you. Number two, I said recognize God's plan and power. And, and that is, he is the only one that gets the glory. So guess what? Sometimes he allows all this other stuff to overtake us, and it look, look like we way behind in the race, looks like we, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he pulls, come on, somebody. I'm saying, listen, my friend, God says, watch this now, that he has chosen the foolish things to confound the world. I've got this treasure in earthen vessels. So in other words, my friend, sometimes, again, like Psalm 66, 12, you know, you, 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 you want to, to do right, and you want to be a shining light. But guess what, my friend? You forgot that in Psalm 66, 12, he, he does it his plan and his power, which is different than our way. And so he allows us. It says, thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. Well, that doesn't seem like success. And then <laughs> not only does he allow, and not the devil, this is God, to allow other people to get ahead of us that seem to be less than us. Come on now. He's checking our spirit. He's checking our attitude. But that was caused men to ride over our head. We went through fire. Okay, now we're going through fire. Doesn't, doesn't seem like the success plan that we, we signed up for. And through water. Now we're about to be burnt up. Now we're about to be dr now we're about to drown. Guess what? But here it is. But, see, but cancels out everything before. But thou brought us out into a wealthy place. Sounds like the rest of your year can be the best of your year. And I, they, they Excuse the expression, they say it ain't over till the fat lady sings. I want to say, no, it ain't over till we win. Come on, somebody. So I'm telling you, my friend, I'm telling you, you need to understand and set your mind that you are going to make the rest of this year the best of your year. And so listen, my friend, recognize God's plan. And again, I'm telling you, his ways are not our ways. You know, if I had it my way, just, you just go success the whole way through. You go just go straight to the line of success. When you do it God's way, it jags off to the left and jags off to the right and jags back over and over. And, over. and then all of a sudden, bam, at the last minute. And there you go, my friend. Number three, refuse what you don't want or like. You just got to learn to refuse to refuse what you don't like or want. And that is this, my friend, like the Fed is, FedEx package, <laughs> you know, they'll tell you, hey, just reject the package because if you accept it and you want to try to send it back, you're going to have to pay. And some of us are paying for stuff that we accepted that we didn't want, and now we happen to deal with some stuff. No, my friend, you got to learn, refuse this. My, I, we were growing, uh, my children were growing up, and uh, like, especially, um, you, you know, Joshua, I'd say to him, um, that's not you. I'm, the scripture says I'm persuaded better things of you and things of the company's salvation. And I'd say that ain't, that ain't even you, son. That, that, that ain't even you, right? And helping them to understand, no, that's, you're operating way below your, and guess what, my friend? I'm telling you. And so listen, the Bible says, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. So you got to learn to say no sometimes. And I'm telling you, we got to learn to refuse. Get this now. We just got to learn to refuse the things you don't like. So if your year hasn't been the best, 
year for, that we got to refuse what happened. Refuse it, my friend. And I'm telling you, and refuse the victim mentality. I was talking to somebody the other day, and bless their heart, they're new to the team, and uh, they, they, they don't know me yet. <laughs> so they started talking. I said, excuse me, excuse me, and I had to interrupt the pattern. I was like, no, 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 that's a bunch of excuses. I don't, I don't go that way. I said, I, I, when I lost all my excuses, I found all my results. Oh, come on, somebody. And I said, so I want you to lose your excuses and start finding your results and stop playing. You got to stop playing the victim mode. I know you've been hurt. I know you've been through some things, but I'm telling you, you got to go from being a victim to a victor and uh, that's just let that rest. Let Okay, let it go. We don't need to rehearse what happened that we didn't like. Matter of fact, we need to learn to, instead of rehearsing it, we can reverse it. Oh, that's good. Write that down. I said, instead of rehearsing it, we need to reverse it. And so again, my friend, that's the next point, and that is this. Uh, that is, um, well, let me again say stop signing for what you don't want, but here's the next thing, number four. Restart, restart, excuse me, and recommit to what you started. That's restart and recommit to what you started, because in the beginning, it's all nice. In the beginning, it's all excitement. In the beginning, but the Bible says desire shall fail. So after a while, you know, that brand new car is shining all the time. After a while, uh, you don't get it washed all the time. Come on. Hello, somebody. That brand new house you move in. Oh, my friend, it's spotless, like spigot, <laughs> spotless, clean, and so forth. But after years, after a while, you just come. I'm saying, listen, in the beginning, it's new, it's fresh, it's exciting. In the beginning, man, folks get started and they're all fired up. And, uh, and again, congratulations to Monica, who made Ambassador, and others of you last week, like Phil and Sharon, that made Ambassador. I'm saying, listen, it gets exciting, but guess what, my friend? After a while, if you're not careful, after a while, desire begins to fail. So, so see, talent starts off good, but character finishes good. And so when I'm saying this, my friend, just restart and recommit with what, uh, to what you started. You didn't start to fail. You didn't start to flounder. You didn't start off. No, no, you started, listen, you, you didn't come to participate. You came to dominate. Remember? Come on, somebody. So fall, winter, and summer shouldn't cancel out spring. I told you about Anderson Silva, who lost several rounds to Shell Summit, and round after round, and uh, he was just losing. And, and, and sometimes Anderson they, they called him the goat, right? And especially back in his day, I mean, he would just – but but sometimes he'd just take his time and, and play around a little bit and – and I was like, wait a minute, what are you doing? But that last round, oh, my goodness, he got around and uh, choked and choked, got him to tap out, man. And uh, and just like the Dante Wilder rematch with Louis, uh, um, um, Louis Ortiz. I mean, I think Louis Ortiz was the only guy that ever really stunned Dante Wilder, although Dante knocked him out. But on this rematch, right, oh, the guy had lost weight. And, he thought, and guess what, my friend, first, two, uh, first round, two, three, four, five, uh, it was disputed. Maybe this, maybe Dante had won, but out of the the six, Luis Ortiz may have had all six, but for sure five. But then that seventh round, <laughs> man, that seventh round, Dante Wilder must have said to himself. Uh, he said he said later after the fight that he just wanted to allow this guy to wear himself out and get a little tired and then take him out, and uh, and that's exactly what he did. He did that Jim Ryan finish instead of a finishing kick. He did the finishing punches, right? But I guess he said, I'm going to make the rest of this fight the best of the fight. Come on, somebody. Because it wasn't all that exciting. I mean, it was, it was like, what are you doing? What's going on? But I tell you, my friend, when that seventh round, oh, my goodness, he came out and uh, knocked the guy out. And I'm telling you, my friend, that's a symbol of what some of you going to do in your business. Maybe, my friend, the first month didn't go so well, the second month or whatever. But I'm telling you, my friend, I'm telling you, you can make up your mind. You can decide. You can implement these principles so that you make the rest of your year the best of your year. So, listen, anything you're not willing to fight for, you may have to live without it, although it was meant for you. And you got to get that down. I said anything you're not willing to fight for, you may have to do without, although it was meant for you. Just like those Israelites that were afraid of the giants, my friend. They loved the, the grapes and so forth being so huge. But, but the, those giants, no, no, go, go on and kill the giants, my friend, and take what's yours. The law of appropriation says God gives, but we must take. But sometimes we want to sit back talking about we waiting on God. He's like, no, I'm waiting on you. And so that's why, my friend, I train warriors. I'm looking for warriors, not whiners. I'm looking for warriors and winners, my friend, not wannabes. And I'm telling you, my friend, you got to be willing to fight for it. You got to fight for your financial freedom. You got to fight to build your business. You got to fight off that, that, that self-negative talk. You got to fight off that 
well, I just knew it wasn't going to work right. No, no, no. You got to fight, my friend. It's meant for you, but you won't have it unless you're willing to fight for it. And so 1 Corinthians 15, 10, one of my favorite verses of late, because Paul said, but I, he said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I but the grace of God, which was in me. Paul said, everybody else was, was sleeping. I'm up praying and getting, everybody else is sleeping. I'm still up working. I'm telling you, my friend, Paul said, I, it's the grace of God. Come on now. It's the grace, but that divine enablement, that divine empowerment called grace allowed me to outwork everybody else. He said, I ain't gonna make no bones about it now. I know it wasn't me. It was the grace working through me, but he said, I wasn't gonna let the grace go in vain. And I'm telling you, my friend, potential, I said yesterday, Potential is a powerful word, but in most people's lives, it's a sad word. Why? Because potential to most people means the unused portion of their good. Come on now. Don't die with your stuff inside of you. Don't die, my friend, with the greatness that God put inside you. Don't die unless it comes out. I was preaching Sunday, and I told the story. The little girl was in Sunday school, and she raised her hand, and she said, please don't get me wrong. Uh, When the teacher called her, she said, don't get me wrong. I believe everything you said. She said, but I got a question. If God's as as strong as you say he is, and I believe it now, she said, but if he's as big as you say he is, and and I believe it, uh, she said, but I got one little question. And the teacher said, what's that, honey? And she said, well, if he's so strong and so big, and if he's in our little old hearts, shouldn't he be sticking out all over the place? (laughs) Come on, somebody. And that's what these calls are designed to do, my friend. That's what my programs are designed to do. That's what my books are designed to do. That's what my 21-day challenge is designed to do. And my 10-day advance challenge is allow the God that's on the inside of you to stick out, my friend, where the rest of us get to see what's really on the inside. And you yourself, my friend, (laughs) you yourself will get to see. See, that's the thing. That's the beautiful thing about the fight that we're in. That's the beautiful thing about the life we live, my friend, because sometimes God will allow barriers, huge barriers in our way. Barriers, I often say, are not made to stop you. No, sir. No, ma'am. Barriers are made to stop those who are not sincere. Barriers are made to stop those who are not committed. But to those of us who are sincerely committed, write it down now, barriers were made to be broken. Oh, when I got, when I got illuminated my mind to that truth, I was like, man, come with me. I'm about to break through. Come on, somebody. Just like God says you're an overcomer. An overcomer doesn't mean you won't have any problems. No. An overcomer means everything that comes against you, you just overcome it, my friend. And so it's time for some of you to start stepping. Stop stooping, my friend. Stop backing down and start breaking through, my friend, because barriers were really designed to help you to discover the greatness that was in you that you didn't even know was there. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm talking good this morning. I love, I'm liking my own talk. I, I want to hear this again myself. I said, listen, my friend, I don't know about you. I'm committed to making the rest of my year the best of my year. What about you? Because it's in your hand. I'm saying, listen, my friend, it's, in, it's up to you. You can decide if you want to. See, you were not born a winner or a loser, but rather a chooser. Come on, somebody. So you choose to win. Choose to get up and brush yourself off. Choose to get up and show the rest of us what you can do. Choose, my friend, to get up. I, I sent uh, I sent Coach um, the, the Hercules and the thing where the guy, they were saying, who are you? Come on, tell us. Who. And, man, they had him all chained up, you know, and all of a sudden, man, he broke up. He had to say, I am, had to say who he is, my friend. I am and uh, Hercules. And, man, broke out of that thing. And I'm telling you, my friend, sometimes you got to talk to yourself and you got to, re- sometimes God will have others speaking to you, asking you questions. You, who are you? And, and you got to stand up and say, I am who God made me to be. I'm not what I look like now. I'm not what my pocketbook says. I'm not what my bank account says. Come on, somebody. I'm so much more than that. I'm not what my circumstances say. Come on, somebody. I'm a whole lot more than that. And so by the grace of God, I'm going to make the rest of my year the best of my year by the grace of God. Number five, I said rehearse the verse. Number five, rehearse the verse. I'm committed to making the rest of my year the best of my year because I refuse to walk in fear, but rather choose to fly by faith. Can I ask you a question? Why would you walk in fear when you can fly by faith? (laughs) They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. See, the renew your strength must mean is getting low, but it's okay. Don't get embarrassed because your strength gets low. See, 
I like what the, oh, Zig said. I used to uh, speak for Zig years ago, and matter of fact, spoke for his staff again, even though he's gone uh, not long ago. But anyway, um, oh, by the way, the, the, the secretary and, and Tom, the son, they, Tom Ziegler, of course, runs the organization now and bought the 21 Day Breakthrough Challenge and, and a bunch of other stuff. And then Lori, the secretary, she's like, oh, my goodness, I've never seen anything like this. You made it so concise and to the point and so powerful. How in the world do you squeeze all that powerful stuff? And short little three to five minute videos, uh, that's the grace of God, my friend, but it's, but it's, it's, it's designed to empower people. You talking about making the rest of year the best of your year, I didn't even think about that, but that 21 day breakthrough challenge will help you to do that. That 10 day advanced challenge will help you to do that. The book, how to build a big team fast will help you to do that. One lady said, you, you, you didn't name that book, right? It should have been called uh, how to become the best version of yourself. And I said, okay, well, I know one thing. When you become a best version of yourself, you can't help but build a big team. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so rehearse the verse. I mean, I, I've rehearsed it myself. I do it several times throughout the day. I'm committed to making the rest of my year the best of my year because I refuse to walk in fear, but rather choose to fly by faith. Fear former experiences affecting reality. So your problem is you keep comparing, well, last year it, it would end up wrong, and the year before that it didn't turn out right. The year, folks, look, no, 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 stop that fear. Walk in faith. Come on, somebody, F-A-I-T-H, find answers in the heart. Faith, F-A-I-T-H, forsaking all, I trust him. We got to trust him instead of our circumstances. We got to trust him instead of our past uh, so-called failures and experiences. By the way, I never lose. Let me say it again. I never lose. I win or I learn, but I never lose. And if I'm learning, I'm not losing. So come on, somebody. I, my son, my middle son, Josiah, who's, uh, he, he does poetry. Now, you heard Josh the other day. He's the oldest, but Josiah is the middle son. He does poetry. He's also the strongest uh, in his weight class in the U.S. right now uh, between the bench press, let's see, the bench press, the um, deadlift, and squats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's like 1,100 and something pounds. He only 150 pounds. I mean, the guy. He, he grew up a little skinny kid, and I kept telling him about G, uh, um, what's his name, Charlie Atlas, you know, the guy that uh, the, the, the kids would pick on me, and his teacher said, Charlie, won't you get you some weights and work out and become the strongest man in the world? And and Charlie did that many, many years ago. And, and so my son went out the, went off in the Air Force and out of the country for a couple of years, came back looking like a chiseled GI. I was like, what in the world? He's like, Dad, you told me the same story a thousand times. You didn't think it was going to eventually – get to me and affect me. And that's why some of you, I'll say the same thing over and over and over and over again. Why? Because I'm going to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it until you get it. And I'm going to stir up the thing that's inside of you by the grace of God, my friend. And I'm telling you, my friend, you have got to rehearse the verse. I'm committed to making the rest of my year the best of my year because I refuse to walk in fear, but rather choose to fly by faith. My friend, faith forsaking all, I trust him. Faith, my friend, instead of fear. Fear, forgetting everything's all right. Come on, somebody. Fear. All righty. Now, I gave you the, my favorite quote, Muhammad Ali. I said I was the greatest a long time, a long time before I believed it. He, he figured out what he wanted to be and what he wanted to believe, and he said, I'm going to just keep saying it long enough. See, faith cometh by hearing. He said, I'm going to say it long enough till I hear it. And after I hear it long enough, I'll probably believe it, and I'll do it. That's what he did, my friend, and that's what you've got to do. See, I know things are easier said than done. Write this down. But Dr. Breakthrough says they'll never be done until they're first said. Ooh, come on, somebody. I said, I said, I said it's easier. Things are easier said than done, but they'll never be done until they're first said. So, so don't be shrinking back. And I understand because people in this world, they overpromise and underdeliver. And so you Christian folk, well-meaning folk, you underpromise so you can try to overdeliver. But Dr. Breakthrough, the kingdom method, is to promise big and deliver bigger. Oh, come on, somebody, according to Ephesians 3.20. I'm saying number six. Here we go. Number six, recover your faith and stuff. Let me say it again. I said recover your faith in stuff. Do you want to make the rest of your year the best of your year? Then you recover your faith in your stuff, my friend. God says, I restore the years that the locusts uh, have eaten. I'm going to restore it, my friend. And so listen, like David, David prayed, Lord, what should we do with the zigzag situation? God says, go and uh, and uh, get it get it all back. Recover all. And I'm telling you, my friend, you got to recover, my friend. Recover by faith and go get your stuff and say, I'm going to make the rest of my year the 
best of my year. This is not me. I ain't going down like this. I'm not even going down mediocre. By the way, I'm saying, listen, my friend, I'd rather choke on greatness than nibble. I mean, excuse me. I'd rather um, um, nibble, uh, no, choke on greatness than nibble on mediocrity. That's right. So, so I'd rather choke on greatness than nibble on mediocrity. People say to me, oh, man, you talk some stuff you talk so bad. I don't know, man. You ought to simmer it down a little bit. I don't know. You ought to be careful. You ought to be, okay, okay, okay. But I serve Ephesians 3.20, God, that says he can do exceeding abundantly above all I can ask or think. So I'm not sure what y'all talking about. I'm telling you, my friend, it's time to step up. I'm telling you, my friend, God can bring you out. I'm telling I know what I'm talking about. I remember being homeless. Yeah, that's right. I remember a situation where I put all my eggs in one basket and lost everything. I'm talking about lost everything. you talking about being embarrassed. You're talking about being ashamed. You're talking about, I'm telling you, my friend, lost everything. Homeless, lost everything. Carless, lost everything. Phoneless. Now, when you homeless, carless, and phoneless, you doing bad, my friend. I'm talking about bad. And uh, and thank God I had a friend let me stay with them, let me use the house phone, and I'll never forget this one company called me and said, "Listen, um, um, we we, we uh, heard about you. We'd like you to be our international trainer director." I said, "I'll take it." They're like, "No, no, we didn't even tell you the stipulation. I, I don't care. I'll take it." <laughs> See, they didn't know what was going on, me, and they didn't have to know. It wasn't for them to know. I knew. I was praying. I was fasting. I was believing, and God was showing Himself strong. And I got started with that company, my friend. And, uh, and, and so we came with the stipulations. They're going to pay me $5,000 per speaking engagement, pay my, my, you know, my expenses and all that. And uh, anyway, I'll never forget the first event I spoke at. And the guy that was the master distributor said, Doc, if you don't mind, let me just put a spot in. I know you probably won't work, but let me just put a spot in. And just in case somebody comes out to hear you and they're interested. And I said, sure, man. And, and that's what happened. And folks started saying, hey, Doc, you in this thing? Want to talk to the Dave? He'll, and Dave started putting the folks in underneath me and, and uh, they, they they just sent me on the tour, right? And and, uh, and watch this, my friend. And I'll never forget that uh, they uh, Dave. I said, Dave, man, these checks are getting pretty good. What I gotta do is get a bigger check. <laughs> now, mind you, I'm having to get the check sent to a friend's house. I, I ain't having that. I, I I mean, I'm telling you, my friend. And guess what? And guess what? And all of a sudden, my friend, I slowed down and said, Let me look at this thing, this compensation plan. Let me go ahead and, and knock this thing out. But you know how when you down, man, when you get down, you, you, you wonder, can I still do it? Do I still have it? And, uh, and, and, and so, listen, my friend, so I, I, I know they're going to pay me to speak, but can I, still, can I build the thing, right? And, uh, and guess what? And I built the thing. From the day I started, listen to me carefully, I made, I made up my mind, and, you know, from the day I started, because they sent me on this tour, and one day I'm here, next day I'm here. Next, and so in the first month, I said, you know, when I decided to build by the first month, I'm going to make $20,000 by the end of this month. And by the grace of God, I made $30,000. And by the fourth month, I made, I made $100,000 for the month. Matter of fact, Pastor Kenny, I don't know if you know the story. That's when you and I met, bioperformance, my friend. And, uh, and boy, I'm telling you, people, I was, no, nobody had a clue of what, what, what I came through. And I, didn't, I never told anybody until I wrote in my book, uh, Your Breakthrough is Guaranteed. And the lady said to me, when you, when you tell people about that book, you ought to tell them to read page 80. That's the best page of the book. And I was like, page 80? What's on page? And I got the book and started reading, and that's when I talked about going through that situation. And I guess he was saying, I think people identify more with that. That's a, that's the, that's a crazy breakthrough. And I'm telling you, my friend, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I don't care what the situation looks like now. I don't care what you feel. Matter of fact, I heard somebody uh Oh my goodness, Reverend Ike! I was like, I saw a, a little thing on YouTube. Tell your feelings how to feel. I was like, Oh, what is this? I clicked on that thing. I was like, Man, that was good. We had to get in that one time. Tell your feelings how to feel, man. Stop feeling the way your feelings let you. No, you got to tell. You got to be in charge of them things, my friend. So learn to be like Muhammad Ali. You don't even feel like it, but just say it. I, I don't. You don't even believe it, but you know what? I'm gonna make the rest of my year the best of my year. And you say it long enough, and just keep rehearsing that verse. I'm committed to making the rest of my year the best of my year because I refuse to walk in fear, but rather choose to fly by faith. Oh, my goodness. Who's ready to recover your stuff, your faith? Recover your faith in your stuff. You remember when you first, you remember you first used to believe God could do anything, and now I know you've been let down several times. It wasn't God to let us down. It was something we didn't do, my friend. And so I want to do like my daughter, Dr. Christina Harris, taught us. She said, stay focused on the win, W-I-N, instead of the win, W-H-E-N. Because she said, I'm working for her PhD. Uh, of course, she, she was homeschooled and flew uh, last year. We put her in a Christian school. 
Uh, of course, she she should have been a valedictorian, but uh, her skin pigmentation didn't fit that school, and so by one one hundredth of a, I mean, crazy stuff. But anyway, that's you know. So anyway, but what I'm saying is, and she blew through, got her master's early, and and then that doctorate, man, and she got a teacher didn't like her and was holding. She had everything done that last, and just but you know what? And she said she was she was she was focused on the win, W-H-E-N. In other words, I'm supposed to be getting this done early, and it's taking too long. And she said that's when she started getting frustrated. And that's, but when she started just focusing on the W-I-N, come on, somebody, that's what you got to do, my friend. You just got to focus on the win. It doesn't matter if you lose the first round, the second round, the third round, the fourth round like Dante Wilder, or even the fifth or the sixth round, as long as you come out on the seventh round, the, the rest of the fight, the best of the fight, come on, somebody. And I'm telling you, my friend, the rest of this business can be the best of the business this year. Yes, sir. Finish strong. Yes, ma'am. Finish strong. I'm saying, listen, stay focused on the win instead of the W-H-E-N win. Because when you're focused on the win, W-I-N, you can finish strong. But if you focus on the W-H-E-N, then you start whining long. Come on, somebody. So it's time for you to stay focused on finishing strong instead of whining long. Ooh, come on. Did I say something right there? Are, are you still with me? Are you still here? I said stay focused on finishing strong instead of whining long. We've got so many whining long folks. Trade that in for finishing strong. Come on, somebody. And number seven, reconnect. This is the last one. Number seven, reconnect or recommit, I should say, to a manifesting mentor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said reconnect or recommit to a manifesting mentor, not just a mentor, a manifesting mentor, one who's manifesting what you'd like to see. Now, listen carefully. I love what Coach says. He said, if at first you don't succeed, go back and do what your mentor told you. <laughs> Man, that's so good. I said, that if at first you don't succeed, go back and do what your coach said or your mentor said. And remember, I say that, and about, well, let me back up and say it this way. A mentor is not one whose advice you just seek. That's just the barely the beginning. I said a mentor is not just one whose advice you seek, but more importantly, a mentor is one whose advice you follow. Oh, we could drop the mic on that one. Everybody's like, oh, Doc, would you be my mentor? Oh, Doc, would you be my mentor? Would you be my mentor? Would you be my mentor? They don't even know what they're talking about. Because, see, a real mentor often becomes your tormentor until you become an implementer. Oh, come on now. <laughs> Jesus said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chase him. Come on now. Scripture tells me I'm, I'm supposed to provoke unto love and the good works. You know, somebody said, man, I can't. Oh, and you, I, I get around you, I can't even hardly rest, man. I was like, that ain't my fault. I'm supposed to provoke you to love and good works. I'm supposed to provoke you to say, man, that stuff Harris doing, I got to raise my level. And by the way, if you understand this, most of the things I do by the grace of God, I'm doing it with you in mind. I'm doing it to say, God, use me as a standard. God, let me do some things that's not been done before so they can see that you can take a little old nobody, a little son, a guy who never believed in himself. But listen, God started putting people around me that saw something in me that I couldn't see, and I would just do it just because they thought I could do it. And then one day I was like, wait a minute, why don't I just go ahead and believe in myself? If God believes in me, if God could forgive me, if God, why don't I just, and I'm telling you, my friend, I'm telling you, you can get up and get this thing done. You can finish strong. I'm telling you, my friend, I'm telling you, it can and it will be done if you'll just reconnect and recommit to a manifesting mentor, my friend, and have somebody in your life that you're accountable for. Something about us humans, you know, if, we, if we're not accountable, uh, we, 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 we kind of get away from it, but when we have that accountability, my friend, all of a sudden we get things done. So, by the way, when you become too big to follow, you unknowingly become too small to lead. Ooh, jeez. Can I say that again? I said, when you become or once you become too big to follow, you unknowingly become too small to lead. I'm telling you, my friend, I'm telling you, my friend, you got to understand this. Write this down. I'm about to give you, I'm going to do a whole training on this statement alone. Not now, I'm going to say, but just give it to you, and then I'm going to come back and teach that thing. You ready for this? One moment of favor can accomplish more than years or even a lifetime of intense labor. Just look at the life of Ruth, my friend. She out there working in the field, working, working, working. But my friend, listen, just one moment of favor. And all of a sudden now, my friend, she's not out in the field. Now all of a sudden, she's married to the man who owns the field. Come on, somebody. I'm saying, listen, my friend, and you serve a God that can do things like that. And I'm telling you that one moment, write that down, one moment of favor can accomplish more than years or even a lifetime of intense labor. But here's the part y'all don't want to hear. But sometimes that one moment of favor won't come until there's years of intense labor. Oh, did he say that? 
I said, yeah, I posted on Facebook. I'm willing to work for everything I prayed for. Come on, somebody. And so I want to know, again, are you willing to make the rest of you, not, not, not say it, are you willing to commit to it, see? See, see when, I, when I try, I fail. But when I yield to him, he through me prevails. See, the try is the lie. We got too many try babies. Try baby, try. You say, I thought you meant cry, but no, try baby. <laughs> we need some manifested men instead of try babies, my friend. Some committed men. And say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Second Timothy two two and the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou under faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And I want y'all to take this down. Teach it to somebody else, my friend. Teach it to your children. Teach it. Say it. Teach. Go over it with somebody else. Why? It'll make you have to know it more, and it'll make you do it more, my friend. But I'm telling you. I'm telling you, the rest, you've got to say I'm committed to making the rest of my year the best of my year because I refuse to walk in fear, but rather choose to fly by faith. And if you haven't been on the calls with John Austin teaching about faith, last night I couldn't believe, I was shocked, seven, six or seven people on the call. I was shocked. I was shocked. I'm like, what? What? They don't want to hear about faith. What? They don't want to follow a man, listen to a man that made $100,000 in nine weeks and says he can empower you to make $12,595 in nine weeks. What? What? I don't mean no harm. I'm busy than all y'all. I promise you that. I promise you that. But no, I made, I made it a priority. Come on, somebody. I said, okay, we just got to make this thing. How do I make it work? Right? Not that I don't start off with, I'm too busy. I can't. Okay, how can I make this work? How can I make this work, my friend? And so, listen, I'm telling you. See, I'm making the rest. I like what Coach said. I'm going to make the rest of my day the best of my day. So I'm going to make the rest of my week the best of my week. I'm going to make the rest of my marriage the best of my marriage. Come on, somebody. I'm going to make the rest of my business the best of my business. I'm going to make the rest of my walk the best of my walk. And you know i got to close. I know I'm getting into preaching mode, but it's, it's, it's okay. But isn't that what our Savior did? Isn't that what he did? Didn't he finish strong? Oh, come on, somebody. Didn't he finish strong? I mean, he, he didn't come like some mighty conqueror, like many would think he would have come. No, he didn't come, my friend, like some, no, he came like a little baby, a little harmless, unable to take care of himself, little baby, my friend. And listen, and you know, they put him on a cross, my friend. They put him on a cross, but guess what, my friend? They put him on a cross, they thought that was the end of it, but guess what? No, sir, because the rest becomes the best. And three days later, he got up out of that tomb, my friend. And now because he got up, I can get up. Come on, somebody. <laughs> they said, if you're the son of God, bring yourself down. He could have done that. But if he have came down, he couldn't have got me up. Come on, somebody. So he stayed up there. So I all of a sudden could get there. And so listen, my friend, and you talking about finishing strong, you talking about finishing strong, my friend, looking under Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, you for the joy that was set before him, despite the shame that set I'm saying, listen, my friend, the joy that was set before him, he saw what he was going to get done, the vision, the, the, the mandate, the purpose on his life. And he said, I'm about to do it. I'm, I know it's not going to be easy. I'm going to go through this painful thing. And that's why I said, Father, if there's any other way, if there's any, let this cup pass for me, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And I'm telling you, my friend, it's the will of God that your light should shine. It's the will of God, my friend, that you might prosper. It's the will of God, my friend, that you might increase. It's the, again, there's going to be times, like I said, you're going through the fire. There's going to be times you're going to go through. There's going to be times. But I'm telling you, my friend, but you don't end up that way. You end strong, my friend. And my Savior ends it strong. And guess what? And because of him, I can end strong. Because of him, my business can end strong. Because of him, my marriage can end strong. Because of him, my training, my children can end strong. I'm saying, my friend, if anybody, if anybody ought to make the rest of the year the best of the year, it ought to be the folks on this call. It ought to be the folks that are part of the Breakthrough Bible Dream Team. It ought to be folks that are part of the Shark Nation. Shark, shark. I mean, go after it. Go make it happen. This is what it's all about, my friend. You make the rest of your year the best of your year. You don't need coaches' help. You got it. It takes one person, one decision, one action to change your life forever. You are that person. You must decide, and you must take action. So come on, my friend. I'm making, I'm committed to making the rest of my, my business the best of my business. So I was up to midnight last night signing folk up, my friend, signing folk up. What you going to do? What you going to do? So let's unmute the lines. Who's, who's going to make the rest of their business the best of their business? Who's going to finish strong? I want you to sound out. Talk to me and uh, talk like a shark, my friend. Shark, shark. So, uh, Coach, I'm trying to unmute the lines. It's not unmuting. <laughs> so I'm not going to try. I'm going to commit. How about we do it together? Could you unmute that thing? 
underneath the lines. Okay. All righty. Talk to me now. Talk to me. I'm going to make the rest of my business shark. I'm going to make the rest of my shark. I'm going to make the rest of my shark. I'm going to make the rest of my shark. I'm going to make the rest of the year my best of the year. Amen. To the glory of God. Who else? Who's committed? This, this is Les, <clears throat> Les Carter. From yeah, I'm committed to make the rest of my year the best of my year. I refuse to walk in fear, but I choose to walk by faith. Come on, somebody. Come on. Mm-hmm. You're fly by Come on now. Who else? Day yes, my, my year is going to be great. Bernard Mallory on his way. All righty. Gloria Gillum. I chose. I'm committed to making the best of my year the best of my year. Thank you so much for that powerful, powerful message. Thank Gloria you. Gillum, I chose to walk. Uh oh, can't ever get it. I'm committed to making this year the, the the rest of this year the best of my year. I chose to walk by not a, what. I'm sorry, guys. But anyway, I chose to make this year the best of my year, and I chose to walk not by fear, but by faith. Thank you, Dr. Stan Harris, for this marvelous word this morning. All righty, Crown Ambassador. Come on. Mel Coon, I choose to make the rest of the year the best of my year, and thank you so much, Dr. Stan. Hey, man, well, thank you, my friend. With the help of God, who else? Come on, talk to me. Come on, somebody Powerful, talk to Dr. me. Stan. Powerful, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you, bro. You can't build a business if you can't even talk up and say what you're about to do. Come on. Now, you have work, I understand, but some of y'all, you can talk, talk up. Talk to me. This is Sister Alba from Living Waters, Apostle Barry Burrell is my apostle. I choose to make this year the best this year the best of my year. Thank wow. you. Praise God. Thank you, sis. Amen. You keep drinking that living water. Uh, I choose to make this year the best of my year. Jaffer, yeah. Jackson, right away, top of the Korean Living Water, purpose and destiny for Jesus. going to make the best of this year. The rest of the year, and vice versa. Shark, shark. Shark, shark. shark, shark. 